Well, it's that time again. Time to build some PCs, that is. So, if you recall, last time I mentioned that I was splitting my PC building projects into two. Originally I had a 98 machine that was far too wide ranging for what I wanted it for, so what I did... I first built this, which is an XP machine from a roughly 2007-2008. More 2008 at this point, I think. And the second was to be a proper Windows 98 machine for an earlier time period. So, turns out I've got a bunch of components from roughly 1997-98, which is ideal. So, not really much else to add, let's just get on with building, eh? So let's take a look at some other hardware we're going to be using in this thing, starting with the motherboard. This is an Intel desktop board, it's an AL don't know if you can see that, the AL440LX. This is an interesting board because certain revisions of this have a lot more on them, but this one, um, well, it doesn't. Uh, if I may draw your attention to this area here, which is normally where your um, audio inputs and stuff would go, not present on this board, and some some of them do have inbuilt OPL3 chips and actual audio capabilities, but mine don't for some reason. I'm guessing they came in all sorts of configurations and uh, well this one is a very base configuration it seems. Anyway point is we've got as well as the uh, requisite RAM slots and the uh, hard disk controllers and all that we have four whole PCI lanes which is quite a lot we've also got two ISAs and an AGP so we've got plenty of expansion opportunity but not only that we have ourselves a slot I think it's a slot one I think that's what it's called. Um, socket, basically, for your processor. Now, if you're not familiar with this era of motherboards, as I'm not particularly really, you might be thinking to yourself, well, hold on, how are you going to fit a processor in there? I mean, normally you've got this little socket that you put your processor in and then you clamp it down, and that's how you put your processor in, right? Well, not so with this one, because the processor goes in a little bit like this. A little bit like that. This is an Intel Pentium 2. Uh, this is a 300 megahertz megahertz model. Uh, not that you'd be able to tell from just the casing. And it's got its own built-in heatsink and fan and stuff. The processor is nestled in somewhere in there. And yeah, this is the format that it came in. Uh, I think there were some other processors that came in this style. The Pentium Pro, I believe, being one of them. Not 100% sure about this particular era, but it's interesting. I find it very interesting that processors at one, once upon a time were like this. And it's funny because processors before weren't, processors after weren't. So it kind of seems to be limited to the Pentium Pro and the Pentium 2 line. Anyway, point is, we've got a nice P2 here, this is an earlier one, like I say, 300 megahertz. Uh, and if you were to look up this monstrously long product code that you can probably not really read, then you would find that out. Anyway, uh, let's put that back in. So that just goes in, literally. Um, I don't believe the motherboard would have come with these uh, retainers, by default. I think depending on what processor you had, you had to put in a different retainer. So because this is a slot one, uh, that has these specific brackets. But it also has, I mean sure that's fine, and you've got these little locking things here. So that's now locked in place, that ain't coming out. But just to be sure, we've got these little, uh, <clears throat> these little clamp things. And they go on the side like this, so not, well not really on the side at the back so you lock them in place and then you sort of spin them around and they just keep hold of it lock that in there and that just uh, sort of keeps it in position a little bit more makes it a little bit more secure and there's another one for the other side you see I'm doing the sensible thing of building all this stuff before I put the board in the case which we'll have a look at in a second Lock that in place, lock it in place I said. Yeah, they're not that secure really these things because they still wobble about a bit, but uh, they do a job. 
And uh, like I said, they keep it from uh, moving about too much. You'll also notice that the board is wobbling about a bit. That's because of the, the uh, clamps on the bottom. That's just how it is. And you get that with modern Intel processors as well. So uh, before we put the motherboard away, we've also got our RAM. Uh, our RAM focus, thank you. Uh, and this, as the label would have you believe, it is 32 megabytes of RAM. So we have two of these, uh, SD RAM, giving us a total of 64 whole megabytes, which is just fantastic and that should do us just fine. So that's the CPU and the RAM. We also need to put in the CPU fan right there, which you can't see because of the RAM, but just trust me, it's right there. Right, and now we're done with that, so we'll uh, put that to one side while we have a look at the rest of the stuff we're going to put in. Starting with this NVIDIA TNT2 N64. Wait, that, sorry, sorry, that should be M64. That's better. So, this is a 2D and 3D accelerator card. So this is our graphics, basically. Uh, it is a TNT2 M64 32 megabyte card. And this should do us just fine. I believe this was... I want to say it was 1998, but I could be a little bit off with my timing. Normally these things have years on the uh, like manufacturing dates on the card, and this might do somewhere. I'm just I don't know where it is. Can I find out? Nope, no idea. Anyway, I shall put uh, more information in the description. So if the date is relevant, then we can uh, have a proper look, or if it doesn't come up itself in uh, installing the drivers and stuff. Anyway, so that's that. That's our 3D um, graphics. But of course we need some sort of audio since we don't have any built in. And for that, and this is probably entirely the wrong choice for this particular machine, but I want to try it out. It is the Creative Sound Blaster Vibra 16C. Now this is a later budget re-release of the Sound Blaster 16. And from what I can gather, it's actually uh, not really much worse than having just a straight up Sound Blaster 16 don't really know what the differences are. I imagine there's going to be sort of lower quality audio and things like that. But saying that, if it's a later release, then possibly they've used higher quality parts. Uh, according to the little chip there, oh, cracky, this was built in 1995. So this will do for uh, DOS games and things. I don't really have any other sound cards I can use, um, but I'm sure this will do a job. And it's going to sound amazing. And finally, we're going to be using one of these things for a hard drive um, because I don't think any of my hard disk drives work and this will probably work a bit better anyway. So this is a SD card to IDE interface thing. Essentially, it allows you to use SD cards as a hard drive. Comsa. <laughs> Nothing too exciting there. It plugs in with Molex or Berg if you want to and uh, goes to IDE. So yeah, this is a great solution for retro computers where you've not got an IDE hard drive. And they can be quite difficult to come by. I mean, trying to find a hard drive that's less than 160 gigabytes these days is remarkably difficult. And you're paying a stupid premium for them. Whereas if you get one of these, then you know, you've got you've got a quicker disk access, you've got a more reliable, you know, piece of hardware. It's brand new and uh, it does exactly the same job. So while there may be a level of um, authenticity you're missing out on, you are getting a, a, you know, a good hard drive out of it, so... Or a good hard drive substitute, I should say. So, for my purposes, it will do just fine. This isn't one of those that goes into the back of the computer. Some of these you can get where they've got uh, brackets on the back, where you can attach them to the back of your case so you've got easy access to the card. This doesn't have any of that. In fact, <laughs> I can't really attach it anywhere because, as we'll find out, these screws don't correspond to anything in my case. Let's take a look at that case, shall we? Yes, this is my Macintosh-esque case that I showed off, uh, I think, about a year ago now. Um, as you can see, I have tried to do a few things with it. I did try and put my uh, old Windows 98 build in there, which turned into a Windows 2000 build, which turned into a Windows XP build, and it didn't ever work properly, so I've uh, gutted it, and um, we're just left with the case. And 
Yeah, a recent Twitter poll that I did demanded, demanded I say, that I use this case for a Pentium 2 build, so a Pentium 2 build is exactly what I'm doing with it. So the way this case comes apart, the side doesn't screw off like you normally used to. No, what happens is, there's this little lever underneath the front of the case, and you just pull that, and the whole top slides off. So now you've got this bare piece of metal, which is brilliant. Um, you could even just use your PC like this if you really wanted to. Um, but we're not going to, because that's silly. So this is actually a pretty interesting case because everything's kind of modular. You see we've got this uh, this floppy bay here that comes out. So we put floppy disk drive in there, that's already in there. And that just, well it's, it's not, it's a little bit awkward sometimes, but it should. There we go. Uh, this also comes off, this is where you put in your hard drives. Uh, obviously we won't be using that, but uh, well, it's going to stay in because I ain't got nowhere else to put it. So there's just this one screw here. Um, this one screw here. Which I uh, don't want to come out now for some reason. Come on. You'll notice that I've got the drill out. That screw. I will just. Ch <clears throat> I will just show you, and hopefully not knock everything off the little table I've got here. That screw is now gone. You'll notice that the hole is looking a little bit ragged as well. I had to drill the beggar out. It just would not budge whatsoever, and I don't get it because that was the screw that was in there before. I unscrewed it this morning. <laughs> to take the hard drive off this, because there was a hard drive on it that I didn't need and um, screwed it back in so I could do a nice thing and say look this is how the case is as it's supposed to be and uh, you know there's a screw in this and then we unscrew it and then we uh, and then this whole assembly comes off like that you know, lovely stuff but no, the screw would not budge so now this assembly has a great big hole in it this hole has mostly survived, but uh, yeah. And there's now where. Uh, oh, yeah, there's the. Um, there's the old screw thread. Yeah, I guess I guess that was the problem. The fact that there is no thread on the top bit. Anyway, that's uh, that's surplus to requirements now. And there's also like shavings of metal all over the case, but I'm sure it'll be fine. So, where was I? Oh yes, so this part is where the hard drives um, would screw onto. Now let me just demonstrate something. You'd think the holes on this would line up to some sort of, you know, hard drive, wouldn't you? But, well they line up with one hole, but that doesn't count. They don't line up that way, so I really don't get what the holes are for. I have, I think I've tried it on a, um, a 2.5 inch drive bay as well and it doesn't seem to fit there either. I could be wrong but yeah I'm, I'm really not sure what the, what the deal is there. Uh, it doesn't go into a, a floppy bay or anything like that. I mean I guess you could fudge it and maybe put it onto the disk drive just about but that's not really where it's meant to go surely. So I don't know I don't know what the deal is there but uh, it'll just have to float I suppose. Unless I can find somewhere better to put it. So, yeah, point is, uh, the case is kind of modular in that way. So the floppy, floppy uh, bay comes out as a whole unit, as you've seen. Um, this hard drive bit comes out as a whole unit, and then you can put your hard drives and slot it back in. 
I don't think I'm going to be screwing it back in, put it that way. Um, I mean, I'll try it, but I suppose um, I could get away with one of these, couldn't I? The old ATX screws, because that's fully threaded, so I think we should. I think we might be okay with one of them. The disk drive bays, the, the 5.25 inch bays, don't come out, but you can access them from either side, so that's not much of a problem. This is the fan that's in the front of the case, and this is the only fan that you get. Uh, in fact, it's the only place to mount a fan. So, that's why I was kind of a bit hesitant to do something that required a lot of cooling. And a Pentium 2 should be okay for that. I did also think about putting like a 486 or something in here. But, I don't know, I don't think it fits the aesthetic. It's extremely dusty, this thing. I'll give it a clean before I uh, I'll put it back in. Preferably outside. That's some dust bunnies on there, yikes. And the other modular part that we've got um, is the PSU. Well, I say modular, it's more like a toolless situation, isn't it? I had another um, fan screws, just need to make sure they stay safe. So, uh, yeah, the PSU, it's got a couple of screws either side. So, um, there's one on the top here there and then there's one on the back as well um, just there so we unscrew both of them and then we can take the PSU mount out I will show you that in a second I won't be putting the PSU in just yet but you know we need to get this thing out don't we and this one is coming out successfully so uh, yeah I don't know what the deal is there get the top one out as well I'll make sure that these screws stay somewhere safe because I know that they work. Work the screws, and of course they work. So now I can just push a little tab at the top, and this just slides out. So there we go. That's our PSU mount, and the PSU goes in something a little bit like. Oh, it's a bit tricky. A little bit like that. And it slides into place, and you've got your four screw holes on there. So you screw that in, and then you just slide it back into place and screw it in again. I really like the way this. Oh, sorry. I really like the way this case is set up um, for the for the reason that everything sort of comes apart. It's just a shame about the lack of any ventilation on it. But I suppose you can't have everything. And like I say, this is. Um, it's built for machines old enough that you can get away with a lack of ventilation. You know, Pentium 2, Pentium, but all the Pentiums. I don't actually know what year this thing was manufactured, or who it was manufactured by, unless this code means anything to anyone. So we won't put the PSU in yet. Uh, the reason being, we need room for our motherboard. So I've already got the RAM and stuff in. This is the one that came with the board, um, but you'll notice that it's got an extra bit on the top if I compare it to the one that actually came with the case, which I still find a little bit odd. Um, you note that they're actually very different sizes, and this one's got an extra bit. I'm guessing this is for a, a specific case. Maybe this is an OEM motherboard and um, it had a larger back panel. So that goes into its little spot. Uh, and. Really, you don't need to see me building a whole PC just because uh, it looks the same as it does nowadays. So, it's not like it's a massively different procedure. Building a 486 is a little bit different, but mostly the same. But uh, yeah, anything, anything newer than that and you're looking at virtually the same exact process. My goodness. These are difficult to get in, eh? There we are. Just checking that we've got the right standoffs. Um, these are all pre-installed, but I've put these two brass ones in that you can't really see all that well, but uh, you'll have to take my word for it. And that just fits nice and snugly. In there like that. Okay, are we happy? I think we're happy. Yep, that looks good to me. They're not quite um, reaching the very edge of the, um, the case though, here. Which is a little bit odd. In fact, another piece of metal there. Let's move out of the way. There we are. 
yeah, it's not completely flush with the back of the case, but I'm sure it'll be okay. So, uh, yeah, let's get some screws in there. Just using standard old ATX screws. Uh, these haven't changed in 30 years, maybe even longer. I know they're not um, technically called ATX screws, but I think that's what most people refer to them as. Come on, focus. Yeah, look at all them screws, eh? Fantastic. This is all exciting stuff, isn't it? I bet. Wow. Screwdrivers. Oh god, now I've dropped the screw. And there we have it. That's our motherboard in. Processor all plugged in. RAM is happy. Just give that another push just to make sure. And now you can see why we haven't put the PSU in yet because it would be sitting right there so we wouldn't be able to get our motherboard in. Time to put the old ISA PCI cards in and, well, no, there are no PCI cards going in either, not at the moment anyway. But we do have AGP and we do have ISA. So I've removed the plates at the back already. So let's just slot it in. ISA, if you're not aware, the bracket actually goes the opposite way to on a PCI or AGP card. You see it goes to the uh, right of the PCB there. I uh, don't know if you can see that clearly. Um, Whereas on an AGP card, well that's the back of the card, so it goes the opposite direction. Um, which can make it interesting. For example, if I put my sound blaster in that part, then I couldn't use this PCI slot. So uh, I'm having to put it in the very end here. Hopefully there won't be any problems with that. Oh, it takes a bit of getting in. That's happily in there. And uh, of course, our TNT2 goes in the AGP. Nice. And we need to screw those in. Is it magnetic now? No. Okay, at this point I would like to put the floppy disk drive, get that plugged in. So that just goes in like this. How does that actually go in? Um, I've completely forgotten. Oh, there we go. So that slots into there like that, and then there's a little groove on the top that just slides in nicely. Satisfying. And we will need ourselves a cable to go from the floppy drive to the motherboard. I've got this rather fetching yellow thing. Uh, I don't know if it's supposed to be yellow, but <laughs> it is. And yeah, at this point we say goodbye to any cleanliness, cable management, because, you know, it's just not going to happen. This uh, this cable doesn't have any notches on it, so I'm hoping putting it in the right way. You ain't going, are you? Come on, this isn't that hard. What am I missing here? Am I, am I actually putting it in the wrong way? I am. A <laughs> okay, I am putting it in the wrong way. There is a... Um, there is a filled hole, blanked out hole, and while we're at it, uh, I should point out that we have a DVD-ROM drive plugged in here. That's only because I don't have any decent alternatives. Um, it'll do a job until I get something that's a bit more authentic. So I've got this nice sort of clean IDE. Again, no notches on it. What is this? Uh, what is this trend of? notchless IDE cables. So, I'm looking on the board and the secondary IDE is the top one. This is important because if it's the primary IDE then it'll cause all sorts of problems with boot orders and things. Um, we don't want to be booting from the disk drive each time. We want the primary to be our hard drive. Now what I could do, because um, the two devices on each bus One's the master and one's the slave. Uh, the only thing is with that, you've got to mess around with jumpers when you get into that territory and, you know, that ain't the life for me. Although saying that, this driver's already set up as slave, so I guess I could get away with it. Save myself um, an extra cable. Might as well. I'm sure it'll be fine. That's the purpose of this. So it actually is the secondary drive, um, and yeah, it will, will save me some effort there. Well, let's just put it in and hope. <laughs> That's the best way. And I suppose we need a card for this as well. 
Now I do have a one gigabyte one here, but I feel like that's not going to be big enough. So, instead I'm going to use this adapter here, and uh, I've been very smart here and put the light behind what I'm trying to show. But it's fine, it's fine. So, I'm going to be using this adapter. Um, it is a Raspberry Pi adapter, I can't remember where I got it, probably with a Raspberry Pi thinking about it. And uh, inside here is a 16 gigabyte Kingston micro SD card. Lovely. So that can go into my... <laughs> it's an adapter within an adapter. Brilliant. That'll just fit nicely there, I think. And it's not going to cause any harm because there are no moving parts in it, so it doesn't really matter if it's rattling around. Uh, it doesn't matter much anyway. I'd rather it not be, but there's only so much one can do. Um, what else do I need to put in before we put all this stuff together? I don't think there is very much actually. I will just show you a couple more things I am thinking about while uh, while we've got it open. Um, I've got this generic. It's one of these um, C Media sound cards, and yeah, I mean. They do a job, I think, but they're very flaky, so yeah, maybe not. Uh, I'm also thinking about putting this in. I had this in the machine before when it was a Pentium 4, and I think I just put it in there just in case, but... Yeah, this thing's only got two USB ports. If I do end up needing more, then I've got this here, which has four extra USB 2 ports. I'm pretty sure the ones on this will be USB 1.1, if anything, so... Yeah, it'll be handy to have extra USB 2 ports. Not, probably not era accurate. Although I can't, I can't really tell you when this is from. I want to say probably early 2000s. But I can't be certain. I mean, it's USB 2, so it's going to be early 2000s, isn't it? Um, late 90s at the very earliest. So it wouldn't be it wouldn't be area appropriate, but if I do find that I need extra USB ports, then it's a possibility. That'll just go into one of the PCI lanes. Yeah, this is what we needed back in the day. Before we had eight USB ports per motherboard, plus two at the front. We don't have any at the front here. And in fact, what I had in this case before, and I've got rid of, is this thing here. And if I find again, if I find something that's a bit more appropriate and fits with the aesthetic of the the floppy drive and the disk drive. Then maybe I'll go for it. This is a front panel USB and card reader thing. I feel like this is a better fit for like a project box though. So, not for this one. I would also like to think about doing some networking with it. You know, get an Ethernet card and just stick that in there. Just because of the convenience of it, what you can do is put um, a SSH server onto your old machine and connect to it that way. Which means you can transfer files super, super easily just over your network from your uh, from your main PC through using any old uh, FTP program. As long as it supports SSH, which I think most do these days. I think with 98, last time I tried it, it was FTP only? I can't remember anymore. There might have been some sort of SSH. I know there is for XP. That's, that's it. Um, so... Let's get the other parts back in here. Let's get the PSU sorted as well. So I'm uh, taking a big risk here in putting the hard drive thing back. I think though... I think I should be okay not screwing it in. I mean, it'll be a bit rattly, but it's held quite firmly in place there. So, you know, it's, it's, it doesn't come out unless you pull it basically. There does have to be some degree of force, so I think I'll leave it and see just how it goes because I don't trust plug, uh, screwing it back in again. So that's all screwed in there. And now... Ugh, it's a little bit tricky sliding this in place, but... There's a little bit of a knack. And you can see how that's completely covering the place up, so we'd have a hard time doing anything with that in the way. It's actually quite a small case, this. Not as big as some have used. Well, obviously not as big as some have used. I've got a Corsair 750D over there. That thing is a beast. Uh, so we've got our ATX power. It's actually kind of tricky to plug things in with all this crap in the way now. Uh, uh, trouble, 
with old PS users that you just get all these wires. It's a bit of a pain. So a DVD drive, our card reader. And if I put it in the right way around, that might help. And oh is it gonna reach? Is it gonna reach my floppy drive? Can I even find the power connector on the floppy drive? Oh there it is. There it is, it's above. So that goes into there. You can't see it because it's tucked away back here, but uh, you'll have to take my word for it. If I can get it in, good grief, get in there. I think we might have made made port. Perfect. Yeah, you don't you don't need all that much cablery when it comes to an old computer. It's not like new ones where you need 15 power connectors for your graphics card. No, 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 not here. So I think we're just about there with this, um, so I'll get it up on my table and we'll give it a try. Get a monitor plugged in, all that good stuff. I'm excited. So we've got video in to the computer, we need some power. It's a right angle power cable, which is actually going up. A bit eager, aren't we? So in a moment it's going to say, oh there's no operating system. Yep. In fact the keyboard error, CMOS checks some bad. Oh dear. Can you actually read that? Probably not. So, we are looking at a CMOS error which suggests that the battery is dead. So that's okay, we can sort that out. Um, and I forgot to plug in a keyboard so I'll change the battery and uh, get a keyboard plugged in and then we'll have another look. I don't know if you can see where the battery is located. It's um, kind of in an awkward spot. But no matter, we can get it out still, I hope. It should just be a case of giving it a little push. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so that's the old one. Wow, it really doesn't want to focus. Come on. Come on. Any time this week. Doesn't want to focus because it's shiny. It focuses on it when it's over there. Right, okay, that's good. Interestingly, the only CR2032s that I have are from Maplins. <laughs> so I don't know if these are going to work either, but we'll find out. For reference, Maplins shut down about... Was it three years ago now? Maybe even longer? But that should just slot in there. Uh, there we are. Right, let's see if that's a bit more positive. By golly, but is this machine loud? Motherboard manufactured by Intel Corporation. I do enjoy this boot screen. That's quite nice, isn't it? Something I forgot to mention before is that I kind of forgot to do the front panel stuff last time, so uh, that's done now. Okay, legacy keyboard, are you kidding? Check date and time settings, right. Uh, it thinks that we're in English US. Uh, I don't know if can we can actually change that. Uh, I guess probably not. So, power failure we want to stay off because I don't like it turning on immediately when I plug it in. Um, first boot device, boot device is fine. Fan always on. I mean, is that good? Do it. Do, do we not want it to be on when it needs to be on? I guess we'll give it a try and see what happens. And the system time, that's a good question. What time is it, Mr. Wolf? It's 11.21. Fifteen, yeah, that'll do. Uh, it's the 21st of February. So, 21. Uh, but okay. 
Oh, oh. Ah, okay. This is interesting. It doesn't seem to think there's any uh, drives installed. That's a concern. Definitely got power to them and they are plugged into the motherboard. Huh. Well, now I say that because it's got the boot devices there, so it must see them. Hard drive. Bootable admin card. Well, okay, let's just. <coughs> Let's just see what happens when we put in a bootable CD-ROM. Hopefully, uh, hopefully all will be well. Yeah, it's not even, um, the disk drive isn't even firing up or anything. Also, no power LED, which is strange because I've plugged it in, the front panel thing. No, it's not happy, is it? Okay, let's uh, have another tinker and see if we can get it working. Well, there we go. I don't really know what which troubleshooting step worked there, but um, it seemed like putting in this hard drive. After I did that, it it seemed to then detect the um, the other drives. Although maybe it's also because I reset the BIOS, or maybe it's because I changed the cables. Maybe it's because the card reader is now powered with a bird connector rather than the ID the Molex connector. One of one of those seems to have fixed it, so <laughs> we're back in the game. We are back in the game. Got ourselves a copy of Windows 98, second edition here. Second edition! Which uh I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but this is the one of the most viewed videos on my channel, me unboxing this thing, so uh, now we get to see it in action, again. I do believe this is a bootable CD-ROM, but uh, I do have my fantastic Windows 98 startup disk, which has not been destroyed in all these years. Obviously it was made back when 98 was a thing, and yeah, it hasn't it has survived the test of time, so, and it still works. <laughs> Of course, I do have an official one, but that's more fun in it. So at the moment, we have a four gigabyte. Oh, that was the other thing that I did was um, change the SD card because I did have this thing in. Yeah, there we go. I had the adapter, and it had a sixteen gigabyte micro SD card in it. Possibly that's why it didn't boot. I'll have to give it another try and see if it works now after everything else. Um, oh, operating system not found. Great. <laughs> So it's not a bootable CD. Um, well, in fact, I'll, I'll put it in now and see, because the other card that I've got, it's only four gigabytes, and that might be a little bit teeny, but, you know. Let's see if this works first. Yeah, it's definitely that adapter that's getting hung up on, isn't it? Okay, well, four gigabytes it is for now, until I can get something slightly bigger. Problem is the only, uh, the only, Full size SD cards I've got, well one of them's in the camera at the minute, so that have been that. And the other one is 128 gigabytes, which is a little bit too big. So in goes the flop. Yeah, actually boots significantly faster as well. If it's not getting stuck on the adapt I wonder why then, because surely it just sees it as the same thing, but Maybe not. Right, let's start the computer with CD-ROM support, please, Bob. I might moan and say, ah, oh, there's no hard drive in, but it's not been formatted yet. Drive C does not con- oh dear. Well, I hope there's nothing important on it. If we just run setup from here. Setup to now can a routine check. Wow, that was a quick check. Uh, I've already got a disk in. Can I create a temporary directory? Yeah. Right, so let's try the other disc. <laughs> let's try the disc that it came with and then maybe that'll actually let us set it up. So this is the one that came with it, with its upside down label. Um, yeah, option one to install Windows 98, so that's the one we want. That doesn't mean I'm going to destroy this one, simply because it says on it, do not destroy. This computer is still unfathomably loud. It's the second loudest computer I've got in this room, in fact. The first one we will uh, 
I'm sure we'll uh, have a play with it sooner or later. Look! Welcome to setup. Here we go. Microsoft Windows 98. This is the fun part. Oh, the uh, the refresh rate. Wow. Yes, please perform a routine check. <laughs> so fast. Yeah, because it's not spinning rust. Uh, I accept the agreement. Ooh, product key, right, we're gonna put, um... Yeah, we'll have it in C Windows, I don't see why not. Come on then. This is where we play the waiting game. So I'll see you in, uh, well, <laughs> I guess 30 minutes. Please register your copy of Windows 98. Okay. Beep. I've had many a situation in virtual machines and that where it's got to this point and it's just hung and like half the files haven't copied over so all the fonts are broken Ugh, flashbacks but this ain't gonna happen here because you know this is hardware built for it hardware built for it that is working amazingly well it's quite incredible isn't it Uh, amazingly well so far, I should hasten to add. Okay, here we go. We should be looking at our first boot now. Should be. Uh, good. Yay! <laughs> that was such a weird thing to see on Windows 98. Do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll do. <laughs> My goodness, here an appropriate mouse. I love how there's two separate devices here and one of them is the LEDs. <laughs> oh, it's done the mouse. Oh no, it's done the... <laughs> oh, jeepers creepers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, it's still. Is it just caught in a loop here? Hey, we have mouse. <laughs> this is this is hilarious. Hashtag not spawn. Don't buy razor. And there we have it. Windows 98, fresh, out of the box and with zero graphics drivers, so this thing's gonna chug. There we go. Fantastic. Well, there's not a whole lot else we can do now, but um, but I'll get it back over to my desk, get the case put back on, and then we'll have a go at putting some drivers on, because that's the fun part. No, not really. My goodness, that shut down quickly, didn't it? So I've got some uh, bits and pieces. 
here. First thing we're going to install is the USB driver. I know it says Aptiva on it, but it'll work with any old Windows 98 install, I believe. Of course, the disk drive sounds like a jet engine as well. Okay, so I should now be able to put my uh, flash drive in and there's some more drivers and stuff on that. Also got uh, some motherboard drivers here. Well, I don't actually know what's on this disc, I just found it on archive.org and thought, you know what, let's give it a go, because I probably need it. This CD has four, oh, let's uh, have a word wrap on. So it has four main directories and multiple subdirectories. Acrobat contains the Acrobat software, yes. Retro Acrobat from 1997. Uh, manuals, okay, that's handy. Uh, we've got software. Landesk. An exciting software application for editing video, here we go. I'm curious about this video wave software, but I want to get the drivers sorted first. So on here I've got drivers for the graphics card and the sound blaster, although you will note that we did have audio just then. Um, I'm guessing... Well, it, it just works, but there's probably some sort of software that we could do with, so we can get proper use out of it in Windows. Uh, let's do TNT first. Uh, setup. I hope this works. wasn't wasn't 100% clear which driver I would need, but hopefully this will be fine. Oh, that looks positive. Yeah, that looks like it's working. Wicked. Let's just have a look and see what we've got. In fact, how does that look on the camera? Oh, it's flickery. Uh, we've got a 32-bit color. Nice. Uh, we don't need to. We don't need to restart. Come on. And I should be able to change this to 60 hertz. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Let's have a look at the NVIDIA stuff for this. Look at this now. Oh, oh, it's a bit hairy that, isn't it? <laughs> Great. Um, yeah, well, let's... Um, there's going to be something in control panel, the NVIDIA stuff. There is, yeah, look, here we go. Desktop manager makes you have multiple display. Okay, yeah, sure. Would I like to enable NView menus? Well, that's already enabled. Uh, no, I don't want that, no. Oh, is that it? I didn't need to do anything, did I? Yeah, okay, let's uh, let's just um, leave that. But yeah, that, that looks that looks fine. Something else that we need as well. I know that it's cut off at the left here, but that's because uh, that's because of reasons. We also need DirectX nine. No, oh. great. Ten. Yeah, that'll do. Yes. Right. So I've got a couple of driver files here. Uh, one is for... ooh! Oh, okay. <laughs> Alright, so it just chucks it into this directory. That's uh, fine, okay. Fine. Windows is now restarting. Oh. Oh god, here we go. It's all good, so I'm sure it's all fine. Sure, everything's fine. Sure, everything is okay. The question is, oh, I wish it'd stop opening these folders every time. Go away. I suppose it's my fault for leaving them open, but have we got any creative stuff in the control panel now? That's the big question of the day. Uh, n no. Uh, sound video and game. All right, so it does see it. Oh, it just says it's a plug and play. Sound Blaster 16. Driver. All right. Well, I guess it must have uh, must have worked then. Got a few games.
Oh, I've got to be careful here not to uh, incur the wrath of Disney. Yes. I need to... Uh... Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> oh, what? It's a bit concerning that we've had two general protection faults already. I'm sure I'll be fine. Potentially due to having a really tiny hard drive. That might actually be part of the problem. Oh no, no look, we've got we've got nice amount of free space. Okay, okay. I must configure my 3D settings, sure thing. Uh six pipe by four acting will do. Yeah. Fine by me. Yeah, I've got audio and stuff, yeah. I'm gonna skip all this. Although video playback's pretty good. Let's just turn it down. <laughs> yeah, the video looks uh, totally fine to me. Let's be Elon Mac with his weird round pod. Uh, Let's just stick with tattooing, why not? Yeah. yeah, go for it. No, it's not it's not as simple as up to go forward, it's W to go forward. Oh dear. Don't know what happened to them lot. Yeah, I mean it's serviceable. This is completely unpatched as well, so I'm 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 of the assumption that there's some Maybe some optimizations made later on. Potentially. Oh, that's looked backwards. Okay. I really don't know the controls, so I'm not going to do very well in this race. Says he. Ha! <laughs> yeah, I haven't, I haven't fiddled with the graphics settings at all, and it's really fine. You could play this. Although I am a bit concerned about the occasional flicker. That's not such a good look, is it? Yeah, like that. Ah, yep. Ooh, it's done. Looking good. Ooh. Again, I'm guessing all these uh, little micro stutters are just because it's loading stuff from the disc. Oh, what's happened to his eye? I wonder... Because it... It's talking up the voodoo on the bottom of this box, so I'm assuming that it has some sort of 3DFX uh, stuff going on, but since we don't have a 3DFX card in here, I can't be certain, but yeah, it says oh, it recommends a Voodoo 2 or a, D a Direct 3D compatible card. I would like to get a Voodoo or something and put it in here. That'd be really nice, but yeah, they're not terribly easy to find, are they? That works perfectly, that. As well as it can. Oh, ha! Except, uh, except when that happens, apparently. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear. Yeah, this is. Uh, it seems to be falling apart. It seems this computer doesn't it already. One thing I am curious about is, uh, well. Jazz 2, I always assumed it was just a Windows game, and this this might be common knowledge, I might have been late to the party on this one, but it does seem that the minimum requirements for Jazz Jackrabbit 2 is to have an MS-DOS 6 system. Oh. Ha! Come on. Let's have our... Uh, High resolution and high colour back. Yes. 
There we go, thank you. They were very generous with Jazz 2 because not only did it not have any copy protection whatsoever, didn't require you to put the CD in to play it, but it also... They included the uh, original gaming with the expansion and uh, some of the releases of the original Jazz 2 had Jazz 1 thrown in there as well. That disk drive is uncomfortably loud, I want to change it out as soon as possible. Now what I'm ma mainly concerned about is this menu. Video. Okay, 6 by 480 by 16 please. Hardware mode on. Done. Now you'll see that the, men the frame rate in the menu, you might not be able to perceive it on video, but it has gone slightly choppier. Yeah, you might have been able to see it there, it was slow, man. Only Prince, medium. Oh god, yeah, it's still, <laughs> still the same problem. It's just that, that one lighting effect just seems to uh, make a bit of a mess. I mean, the rest of the game works just fine, yeah, that's, it's all good, it's all, it's all fantastic, but just spawning to levels just seems to completely kill the frame rate, and I really don't get it. I wonder why it says that it works with DOS then, because it clearly doesn't, does it? Well, uh... Well, there is uh, clearly something amiss with this computer, isn't there? Because things just keep crashing. Um, my assumption is that it's got something to do with running it off an SD card. I have had trouble with it before. Um, so possibly I'll have to find a suitable hard drive. I have got this uh, Seagate one here, which I talked about earlier. And it does have a jumper at the bottom that restricts it to 32 gigabytes, so I think this will probably do the job. Oh, you can't see. Well, take my word for it then. Um, yeah, that's probably the way forward. I just need to find the right jumper. I just need to find a jumper that I can use. I'm sure I've got one somewhere knocking around, but maybe on another hard drive. But yeah, I think that might be the solution here. Because it's clearly not happy, is it? But before we finish, before I... Uh, go tinkering some more. There is one thing I want to try, because I'm curious as to how this will go on a Pentium 2, and we haven't actually played a DOS game yet, so this seems as good as any. So I'm just going to run it under Windows because it does work, as we uh, discovered. So far so good. Let's try something a bit different this time. Plan! Oh goodness. Never played this track before, as you can probably tell. Yeah, it sounds, sounds alright. I mean, as we established, I don't think we have a, a real OPL3 in here, so... It's just emulating it, but it seems to be doing an okay job. This is a bit like Cortex Castle, this, this track. Voxel's been playing some Crash Team Racing. Oh no, I've lost my first place position. What a tragedy. Well, I could play this all day, so if I don't stop now, then camera's going to run out of battery. My card's going to run out of space. It's going to be terrible. So, uh, I'm going to stop here. But, yeah, the hard drive situation we will take care of. With the real hard drive. And also we've got the video card to sort out. But I feel like that's a longer term thing. Just because I need to find another video card. So, I'll have a go at sorting that out. And hopefully have an update for you.
at some point. See you all for the next one.